Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. Hope you're doing well. Today I've got a video that a few of you out there requested to me. And again, if you have requests, shoot me an email. Email address is in the description of this video and all videos actually. Today we're going over bad boy fragrances, five different ones. So obviously these are my choices for bad boy fragrances and you may have a different idea of what constitutes a bad boy fragrance. For some of you out there, it could just be a straight up leather scent or really dirty scent, a hyper masculine scent. You could go that route or you could go for more just things that are gonna pull attention but maybe have slight edge to them. In this video, got a little bit of each one of those styles. So let's jump into it and start talking about these fragrances. And as we jump into these fragrances, just want to remind you guys again really quickly, my Lion Gallery of Parfums, we are running a pre-launch sale. If you're watching this in the future, pre-launch sale is over, but I have information on that in the description below. Not too much time remaining on that. Each one of these fragrances is attention grabbing in my opinion. Each one of them is a potential compliment puller. The fragrances that I'm going to be highlighting here today are not fragrances that are just extremely earthy or extremely dirty. Now some of these fragrances do have notes in them like smoke or leather, but they're done in a way that is still wearable and still approachable. So for me personally, when I think of a bad boy fragrance, I don't just automatically think of something you know, really dirty or again, earthy or overly pungent, maybe something like Gucci Guilty Absolute, some of you might say is a, a bad boy fragrance, but that's not really the mindset that I took with this video. All right, first fragrance, Guerlain L'Homme Ideal L'Entance. This one has that almond note that you're gonna find across the entire line in the L'Homme Ideal line, but this one has a prominent smoke note to it. There's also chili in here, there's tonka, there's leather, and there's vanilla. So there is a little bit of sweetness in here that's gonna help with the appeal, that's gonna help with the wearability. You've got that little spicy pop from chili, the touch of smoke, it's not too heavy, it's not an overly smoky fragrance. And then of course, leather in there to give it a little edge. Even though this one I'm categorizing in this video as a bad boy fragrance, it is still really wearable, very versatile, nice compliment pulling fragrance, and it's actually got a little touch of class in there too. The Lomity Go line is a great line. It's got so many different fragrances in there that are gonna cover you in almost any situation you could think of. This one gets overlooked a little bit, gets slept on a little bit, but definitely worth checking out in the first one I wanna mention here today. Next fragrance is from the house of John Barbados, and this one probably more along the lines of what people would think of when they think bad boy fragrance. It is Dark Rebel Rider. And I mean, you can really just look at the name Dark Rebel Rider and it tells you right there, bad boy. Leather is one of the main notes in the fragrance, which is not really a surprise when you take a look at the bottle. It's also got some resins in here, a little bit of sweetness as well. That's gonna be coming from cacao or chocolate, and there are also woody notes in here. This one, one of the better John Barbados fragrances for fall and winter time, so right now is a perfect time to wear this one. Even though leather is one of the main notes in this fragrance, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, still has a lot of wearability, still a compliment pulling fragrance. You could also check out Dark Rebel. That one would work pretty much as well as this one, Dark Rebel Rider, as far as bad boy scents go. And just because I know there's gonna be at least one person that mentions it in the comments, Carolina Herrera Bad Boy, I'm not including in this video, even though the name of the fragrance is Bad Boy. The fragrance to me is not terrible. It doesn't smell horrible or anything like that, but it's not really enough as far as being an attention grabbing and somewhat unique fragrance. Like I said, it's not horrible. If you like it, go ahead and wear it. The only reason I'm mentioning it here very quickly in passing is because of the name of the scent. Next up from Salvatore Ferragamo, Womo Signature. This one, fantastic. I really like the Womo line. Womo Signature to me takes that Womo DNA and just amps it up a little bit. Tonka, coffee, leather, and cinnamon, some of the notes in the fragrance. Yeah, leather yet again. Coffee though, a little bit more prominent than the leather in this fragrance. Again, nice touch of sweetness in there, a little bit of spiciness, very wearable, slightly dark. It is more of an evening fragrance than a, a daytime fragrance and a big compliment puller as well. Womo Signature for me, my favorite from the entire Womo line. Fantastic in fall, fantastic in winter, good performance as well, and the price, not that bad from discounters. All right, let's keep this moving and go with Man in Black from Bulgari. 
which is kind of like Bulgari's version of Spice Bomb by Victor and Rolf, which realistically is another fragrance you could feature here. This one's got spices, rum, leather, tonka, and tobacco with some of the notes in the fragrance. So you've got a lot of stereotypically masculine notes in there, rum, leather, tobacco, all right there, along with a whole bunch of spice. One of the main ways this differentiates itself from Spice Bomb is the rum. That boozy note in Man in Black is pretty prominent and you're not gonna find that in Spice Bomb. So that's really the easiest way to tell those two apart just very quickly. This one also more affordable than Spice Bomb. So that's another positive for a lot of you out there. Really good performance as well. Super, super solid fragrance and a great choice for bad boy scent. Though this one, if you wanted to, you can wear easily formally as well. Put on a suit, spray this on and fall and winter in the evening, you're gonna kill it. So Bulgari Man in Black definitely I feel like needs to be mentioned. Uh, also, some of the flankers like Black Orient, that one could work as well. Though I think if you're gonna choose just one from the line, Man in Black, at least as far as bad boy fragrances go. Now I've got two more fragrances to talk about. So technically I've got six in this list. The next one is gonna be a clone fragrance. And technically this is the most popular clone fragrance that is out there today. Club de Nuit Intense Man from Armoff. It's got lemon, birch, currant, pineapple, it is a clone, of course, of Creed's Aventus. Some people hate this fragrance, absolutely hate it and everything it stands for. Other people love it and think that it's one of the best things ever made because it's a huge compliment puller with great performance that does not cost very much at all. The opening to this fragrance is, frankly, not great. <laughs> it's a little bit harsh. A lot of people will compare it to the smell of like lemon pledge or a lemon household cleaner. As it dries down though, that harshness in the opening goes away and in the dry down, this one has some serious oomph, got a little bit of darkness to the scent, and as I just mentioned, is a big compliment puller. So if that's what you're after, if you're after just pulling attention in a positive way, this one is really good at doing that. For people that are fragrance aficionados, fragrance collectors, people really into niche fragrances, really into indie fragrances, they're gonna smell this and say the quality sucks and it does not smell that good. But for the vast majority of people that smell it, especially after that opening is dried down, they're gonna like it. Actually, they're gonna like it a lot. And I think that this one actually is a really good bad boy fragrance once you get past that opening. The mid, the dry down, just absolutely kills it for most people out there. And it does have that little bit of an edge, that little bit of darkness to it from the birch. So you get a little bit of smokiness there. Okay, last fragrance for this video, Giorgio Armani Code Profumo. This one, just a huge performing fragrance. It is what I would consider a beast mode scent. It lasts forever, it projects very heavily. And like most of the other ones here, big compliment puller. Tonka, amber, cardamom, and yes, leather. Again, some of the notes in this fragrance. When you first spray it on, it's got this effervescent kind of sparkle to it, this sweetness that leaps off your skin and comes across almost like, uh, like a cola or a root beer. Of course, there was another Code Flanker done after this one, Code Absolute, which I actually prefer to Code Profumo, a little bit more refined, more reined in, more elegant than Code Profumo is. But if you're just going for attention grabbing uh, and just maximum compliments with maximum performance, Code Profumo is a better bet than Code Absolute. It is loud, it is sweet, it's got a little edge, it has that Code DNA that works so well because it's been around forever and so many people have worn it because of how likable it is. So Code Profumo, great evening fragrance, great clubbing fragrance, great bar fragrance, and the last one in this list of bad boy designer fragrances. Well, technically Guerlain isn't a designer, but I'm not gonna get into that. I actually have videos of each fragrance where I go over them and I've got a video with professional perfumer Richard Rapon who made Tom Ford Oud Wood where he goes over them as well all on this channel. So if you wanna check those out, feel free to search the channel there and there. All right guys, that's gonna do it for me. Thanks so much for all your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.